I like video games. That is probably not a surprise. I mean, my whole generation has been defined by video games and their influence on us clearly shows. But it all comes down to the fact that video games are the most interactive and dynamic form of media that there ever was. You're the main character, you fight the battles, you are the main part of the story and you decide where that story goes. And because of that interactivity, video games are also extremely complex and made up of many, many different moving parts and pieces. The gameplay, the graphics, the story, the aesthetics, the characters, the locations. But out of all of those things, one part holds the most importance to me. Build your experience and emotions about the game the most, and that is music. In this video, I will try to explain music in video games as the best tool for creating the atmosphere and the feeling of the video game. And it's not easy for a composer as he decides how he's going to make that music. Because not only does he need to make something appropriate to the game, that music also needs to loop while not getting obnoxious and it needs to sound good. And a whole another layer of tasks is added when composing interactive music for a video game, which changes based on the player's actions. I will present some examples of video game music and the different ways it can be used. Hollow Knight is by far my favorite video game ever. It's fun, charming, unpredictable, challenging, beautiful. The gameplay is simple yet allows creativity and player choice. The controls are quick and responsive. I could go on and on, but I will save that for my review of the game. For now, the only important thing to know is that the music of Hollow Knight laps. Christopher Larkin could be a reincarnation of Mozart, for all we know, because his compositions are absolutely gorgeous. From the first town of Dirtmouth to Green Pet and Crystal Peak way down in the city of Tears and Kingdom's Edge, and through the whole west world of Hollow Knight. You are accompanied by this peaceful, melancholic and mysterious OSTs, which obviously stands for original, super amazing, great things of music. Along with the visuals, these OSTs show that this ancient kingdom of Hollow Knight is long abandoned and forgotten. Each area has its theme song that is appropriate for the location, say for example Crystal Peak, which is a crystal mine full of these conveyor belts and transportation systems, so the theme song is crisp and echoey. The music adds that final layer of intrigue and mystery that pushes you forward to explore, find new locations, powers and spells. These peaceful OSTs are greatly contrasted by the also gorgeous boss teams. Bosses are a big part of Hollow Knight and every battle is important and special. So almost every boss has this powerful, orchestral, epic, yet sometimes tragic soundtrack. And not only that, Christopher Larkin uses his music to connect the world of Hollow Knight on a much deeper level. And the best example of this would be the connection of Green Pet and the Queen's Gardens. With the signs scattered throughout the nearby area, you can piece together that these two locations were once this big sub kingdom, but over time separated due to a dangerous disease spreading to Hollow Knight. That old and distant connection is shown in their OSTs, which contain similar and sometimes the exact same melodies. Theory made an excellent video about storytelling through music in Hollow Knight, and I highly recommend it. And lastly, I just really want to mention this cool fusion of characters and music in the City of Tears. When you first enter the city, you'll likely be surprised by distant singing, which is odd as you never heard something similar before. Well, on the other side of the city, you can meet the songstress Marisa, who is revealed to be the corporate behind this melody. These little details that are scattered throughout Hollow Knight just add to the already amazing polish of the game. Hollow Knight is a truly special video game, and its music is nothing less, and it deserves its own special reward. Just can't wait for Silk Song whenever that comes out. Minecraft is a really relaxing game. You have this whole world of infinite options and possibilities that just begs to be explored and built upon. You can create anything you want. Houses, castles, farms, redstone contraptions, machines, villages, and so on and so forth. The calm intrigue is reflected in its music. David Rosenfeld, better known as C418, managed to compose these tranquil OSTs that are just enough to be heard and enjoyed, but not too overwhelming to take away from the experience. Their special 
people in their very own right, and by that I mean that anyone who has ever played Minecraft can recognize its music, and after that they will probably cry of nostalgia. Rosenfeld's music is simple and that's exactly why it fits Minecraft so much. It's not this big and epic orchestral score made up of tons of pieces and parts, it's a single, simple melody that slightly alternates in different ways and patterns as you play. It's ambient music, made for you to feel neutral and calm, and that encourages you not to take everything so seriously, cause that's what Minecraft is on the surface layer. It's calm, playful, humorous, and even sometimes childlike. That's what makes Minecraft so special and popular, and Rosenfeld understood that. that is the same reason why Minecraft's music is so special and popular as well. Cuphead is a really fun and a difficult video game. It's this whimsical fusion of a 2D run-and-gun platformer with the style of American animations from the 20s throughout the 30s. The animation is hand-drawn and top-notch, full of these expressive movements and facial features, and the old cartoony style definitely shines through all the attacks and effects, and to perfectly complement this art, there is the soundtrack. One, two, three, four, Just like the gameplay, the soundtrack is lively and energetic. Christopher Madigan really captured that jolly aspect of Cuphead in its score, which is made up of a solo pianist, a vocalist, a tap dancer, a 13-piece big band, and even more. Every song is different and special, and they all feel old-fashioned in a good way, which greatly fits with the design of the game. But there are many more ways of using music in video games. It doesn't just have to be a background, it could be a part of the video game world itself. Like in say, for example, the Bioshock franchise. Because they are set in the 1940s, in Bioshock games you can occasionally find gramophone players playing old-time music. While the first two Bioshock games are set in an underwater destroyed city of Rapture, Bioshock Infinite is mostly set in a perfectly functioning flying city of Colombia, if you don't account for all the racism and other ideological misdeeds. This ain't no place for you, sir. You best be on your way, or there's gonna be trouble for us both. So this effect doubles for Bioshock Infinite, as it makes more sense to find more gramophone players in a functioning society than in a destroyed city. Music can also add a lot of suspense to a scene if used correctly, and that is mostly used in horror games. You will always hear a haunting melody just before something scary happens. It prepares you for a jump scare or something similar by causing you anxiety and a feeling of dread. It's even better when this sort of music is used to bamboozle the players to be scared of something that doesn't even exist. That just shows how much power music has over our subconsciousness. But music can also connect to the gameplay. Music can also be a mechanic. Take Minecraft for example. Again, more specifically, the note block. Its usage requires knowledge of redstone and an even better knowledge of music. And while note blocks are very hard to use, with them you can create any song you want. You can find dozens and dozens of videos with full blown songs made only with this single block. There are two great music mechanics in Overwatch. The first one is in the attacker spawn in the map Dorado in which you can actually shoot the bells above you to produce sounds and even certain songs. The second one is in the map Paris, in which you can actually interact with a piano and play some songs.
I hope I could explain the importance and the beauty of music in video games. Music is truly the most powerful tool for creating emotions and the atmosphere. And even if you never played a video game before, you are sure to know what kind of feeling the composer was aiming for while creating the music. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.